Hi everyone, my name is Brooke Atkinson and I'm a fourth year medical student as well as one of the OMM pre-doctoral teaching fellows. Today, I'm going to talk to you about osteopathic manipulative medicine. Where does it come from? Andrew Taylor Still is the founder of osteopathic medicine. He found inadequacies with conventional treatment modalities of his time. For example, the use of arsenic and mercury. A.T. Still found the relationship between structure and function through the study of anatomy. He quotes, disease is the result of anatomical abnormalities followed by physiologic discord. A doctor of osteopathic medicine is the only profession with the sum total of the four following items. A fully qualified and licensed physician, educated within a context of distinct patient-centered health-oriented philosophy, who is trained to combine specialized diagnostic and therapeutic hands-on skills, otherwise known as OMT, with the latest advances in the science and practice of medicine to offer comprehensive health care to patients. The tenets of osteopathic medicine express the underlying philosophy. The first tenet, the body is a unit. The person is a unit of body, mind, and spirit. The second tenet, the body is capable of self-regulation, self-healing, and health maintenance. Think about how amazing our immune system is with this process. The third tenet, structure and function are reciprocally interrelated. Try a test on your own. Take a deep breath while you're sitting up straight and compare that to taking a deep breath while you're flexed forward or hunched over. See if you notice a difference. The fourth tenet, rational treatment is based upon an understanding of the basic principles of body unity, self-regulation, and the interrelationship of structure and function. Let's discuss the five models of osteopathic care. Consider a patient with the chief complaint of trouble breathing. Going through the five models, we can develop a differential diagnosis. For biomechanical, does the patient have a rib fracture? For neurologic, is there an oversympathetic drive altering the patient's breathing? Metabolic, does the patient have any thyroid issues or an infectious cause like pneumonia? Respiratory circulatory, does the patient have chronic heart failure or a pulmonary embolism? Behavioral or biopsychosocial, does the patient have anxiety? We use OMT to treat somatic dysfunction. What is somatic dysfunction? It is a disturbance in the muscle skeletal system that can cause problems with how the body functions. We use the muscle skeletal system to help us identify problem areas. We have trained our hands to detect changes in the tissues of the body. We learn how to assess the body for dysfunction and then use a variety of techniques to correct them. OMT is not limited to only muscle skeletal complaints. For example, we also have techniques that can address a person with heart failure presenting with edema. We do not claim to heal the body, instead we try to bring the body back to a state where it can function optimally. It may not fix the problem, but it may improve their quality of life, and that can go a long way with your patients. OMT at Western U. All DO schools provide about two years of OMT training. This averages about 200 hours nationwide. At Western U, students have two to four hours of OMT per week. During your third year, you are required to have an OMM core clinical rotation. In addition, there are opportunities to shadow and participate in health clinics. Here is a clip of Dr. Magoon, one of our own OMM faculty members, evaluating and treating a pediatric patient. Here. So she, this left condyle does keep slipping, and so it's getting a little jammed under the atlas. So we're, again, we're going to do that decompression. So this is step four of, um, of your venous sinus drainage. And so we're just slipping under the base of the occiput right at the condyle right there. And I'm just going to just apply a little uh, posterior lateral pressure until both sides are released. 
Yeah, he took a nice deep breath there. Because she does have the tongue thrusting. So this is cranial nerve 12, a little bit of entrapment of the hypoglossal nerve. So we want to make sure there's so we're not tongue thrusting as much. Yeah. Okay. Hello, you want to roll some more, huh? <coughs> oh, hey, hey, hey. Hey, is that good? She's got nice motion. Look at that neck. Yeah, that's right. And a little bit of a still technique. So I'm just going to wrap my fingers around her. A little plavical, a little ticklish, huh? And I'm just putting a little bit of extension. Oh, so we get that range of motion. There you go. So now she's going to have, we'll be able to bring her fingers to her nose and to her mouth, because this is what she should be doing at this age, experiencing the world through her mouth. Yeah, so that's what you do. That's right, that's your finger. In the OMM lab, you will work with your peers and colleagues to develop diagnostic and treatment skills, just like Dr. Magoon used on her patient. In the OMM lab, students assess somatic dysfunction of all regions of the body, including the external pelvis, sacrum, and chest wall. We emphasize it is always important that students ask their assigned partners for permission to palpate. There will be no contact with or exposure of genitals of either sex or breasts of females. Now we will run through a series of clips demonstrating skills you will learn in the OMM lab. In the OMM lab, you will be learning how to perform a structural exam. One thing you will be learning is how to assess your patient's gait. So notice that its stripe length is even and its cadence is rhythmic. There's a little bit of diminished arm swing on his right thigh. And now in showing our outcome, go ahead and pause it there. Additionally, we also assess our patient's posture. Here is an example by examining the curvatures of the spine. And I'm noting the curvature on his cervical region <clears throat> is a little bit has a lower dosis. There's a psychotic curve on his thoracic region. And then there's a little bit of diminished lower dosis in his lumbar. We find somatic dysfunction by looking for TART changes, which stands for tissue texture changes, tenderness, temperature, asymmetry, and restriction of motion. For example, to assess range of motion of the upper extremity, we can have the patient perform a quick test. We also ask the patient to demonstrate their motion, which is called active range of motion. Uh, so first I'm uh, testing her active range of motion. So I'm going to be assessing her T-spine uh, in this region here. Right, and now can you go ahead and bend forward for me, please? Okay. Go ahead and back. Come back up to midline. And extend backward for me. And I suppose she has a uh, restriction in extension, so I can come back to midline. And then now can you go ahead and drop your arms to the side and side bend to your left. Uh, come back up to the midline and slide bend to the right. And come back to the midline. And it looks like she has more restrictions side bending to the right. And that now he will further assess with passive range of motion. Assessing for her passive range of motion, I'll be assessing the same area that I did for the active range of motion in this region here. Right. Now, is it okay if I uh, have permission to pop it? Okay. So you're going to be feeling the arm to be having contact with both of your shoulders. As I come across the chest to assess for your passive range of motion. Okay. I'm go ahead and grab my arm. Now I'm going to be side bending her to the left. And back up. And we go to the left. Assessment of the patient's tissue temperature can clue us into whether an infectious process, chronic, or acute condition is occurring. The quality of the patient's tissues may give us information on whether there is a muscle skeletal condition or underlying visceral condition. This is tenderness. Now with my cigarette moving out. Okay, so uh, Victoria has stated she has tenderness here about the level of T5. And 
continuing my palpation down. Students will also get a chance to hone their orthopedic examination skill set. Our findings will generally lead us to a segmental diagnosis. And start there for my um, treatment. So I feel like L4 is actually rotated, right? Go ahead and flex forward for me. Go ahead and come back and extend backward. Good. And it gets worse with extension, better with flexion. We just did all of this work to diagnose our patient, which is critical. As first and second year students, not only do you learn to diagnose, you also learn how to treat. Oftentimes, if somatic dysfunction is the underlying cause of our patient's pain, we are addressing the actual cause of the symptoms, limiting the patient's need to take medications that may have negative side effects. It's pretty powerful when you can have an effect on a patient before they even leave the room and feel better on leaving. We have many techniques at our disposal. These are some pictures of different techniques we utilize to treat our patients. As you can see, we are very hands-on. We want to take this opportunity to show you some of the treatments that you will learn in your first and second year. One technique you will learn early during your first year is soft tissue, which is demonstrated here. Another technique is muscle energy. Please notice the increased range of motion the patient gains. Four, five, four, three, two. One, perfect, relax, take a deep breath in and out, and I'll go a little bit further. Get in, contract into me. Five, four, three, two, one, relax. Good, take a deep breath in and out. We'll move one last time. Go ahead and contract into me. Five, four, three, two, one, and relax, take a deep breath in and out. Good, final stretch and back down. Another technique is HVLA, or high velocity, low amplitude, which is a slightly more advanced technique. There we go. And now I'll go ahead and reassess. I hope you all appreciated the cavitation that you heard. In this next clip, we will see a brief orthopedic examination, which will later be treated with myofascial release. In my patient, he's complaining of left-sided shoulder pain and restriction in range of motion. Let's go ahead and check an aptly maneuver to see that restriction. So this is pretty restricted. Let's compare it to the other side. And here he's able to perform it completely by touching his fingers with both hands. Myofascial release, or otherwise known as MFR, is a passive technique that can be direct or indirect. Direct meaning going into the tissue barrier, and indirect meaning going into the tissue ease. The physician identifies resistant or tight myofascial tissues in a particular body region or related to a localized muscle spasm and engages it with continuous palpatory feedback to achieve free movement of those tissues and or other related structures. Oftentimes, we use respiratory cooperation to help aid with this technique. Now the physician is reassessing all three planes of motion or barriers that were addressed. Now let's see if the myofascial release helped or made a difference for the patient's left shoulder. We'll go ahead and do this, or yeah, this way first. You can touch here and let's check the other side. Much closer. I hope you all were able to appreciate the increased range of motion achieved. Here at Western University and at Comp Northwest, we have a very unique position known as the NMM-OMM Predoctoral Teaching Fellowship. And I have to admit, it is definitely the best job ever. We have the distinct pleasure of returning to campus during our clinical years 
to teach the course Osteopathic Principles and Practice. This is a teaching fellowship in which we give lectures to the first and second year students. It is a great opportunity to experience the academic side of medicine, especially if this is something you are interested in for your future. We learn how to design lecture plans, present information to different types of learners, and learn how to write test questions. The fellowship is also an opportunity to improve your palpation skills and master your techniques. We have the opportunity to treat students, staff, and faculty at our OMM clinics. If research is something you're interested in, we have that too, as well as weekly journal clubs to keep us up to date on the literature in the osteopathic world. The fellowship is an excellent opportunity to develop professionally and learn skills that will help us not only stand out to residency directors, but will benefit our future career. I will end with this quote by A.T. Still. Any variation from health has a cause, and the cause has a location. It is the business of the osteopath to locate and remove it, doing away with the disease and getting health instead. Thank you. We hope to see you at Western U Comp. Best of luck.